Hi, this is Dan Aykroyd. He's progressive. He's beautiful. He's thoughtful. He's intelligent. He's powerful. He's positive. He is Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Empowering listeners from the US to the UK. Live on air with Stephen Cuoco. I made sure that I was fresh, feeling vibrant, clean. I took a nice hot cold shower <laughs> because I knew I was going to have Aunt Chippy on today. And I'm not going to lie. I was in a space where I made myself a, a very good lunch. And then I lay down, I did some meditation, a little bit of reading. I did my prayer. I wanted this to this interview to be a blessing and to serve both of us. And I just, uh, I, I wanted to make sure that I was on. <laughs> you know, I take showers, at least, I definitely. I mean, you guys know this. I take two showers a day. You know, I take one to start my day. I take one before I go to bed. I have to take a shower before bed. There is no way that I'm going to go to bed, whether it's having an hour worth of feeling musty or a couple hours, we're going to bed clean. And my Sicilian grandfather always mandated us kids to shower before bed. So for the last 50 years, I literally have been having two showers a day. Yeah, no lie, no lie. You're listening to Live on Air with Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio and Biz Talk Radio. Download the app, tune in on Alexa. Power 98.5 is available on Apple Music. 200 countries and counting. On Biz Talk Radio, their potential reach is 20 million. I'm blessed and honored to be on Biz Talk Radio, which live on air with Stephen Cuoco airs weekdays, 8 a.m., 12 p.m., 5 p.m. Eastern, Saturdays at 10 a.m. Eastern, and Sundays at 9 p.m. Eastern. I've got someone who I consider family, a friend. She is considered brassy, but she is the love of my world and has brought so much joy to me. We met in Vegas at the live taping of Kelly and Mark. We met in the family friends VIP section, had a wonderful conversation. The staff spoke highly of her. I heard that she had recommended a long time ago that uh, Kelly and her husband, Mark, should be doing a show together. And I always had thought that as well. I always felt that. Kelly's husband, there's something incredibly amazing about him that I enjoy watching the show. And to have watched them in Vegas live on that incredible set that was built out for them was amazing. And what you feel on TV is the same in person but I, I feel that when you're able to be in their presence and to really see how they interact when they're not on camera and when they're like not on stage, it's remarkable. And they've been together since her young days of on, I believe it was General Hospital or One Life to Live, something like that. But now we're going to bring up Aunt Chippy. She's in Vegas, where I was for probably about seven years, not missing the weather out there at all. Aunt Chippy, what's happening? What's grooving out there in Vegas? Uh, it's still hot. You didn't get bring any cool weather here, that's for sure. <laughs> you didn't leave anything. You didn't take the hot weather with you. So here I am, stuck in the house again, waiting for you to call me. You're the highlight of my week. Don't ask. I, I celebrated my 85th birthday for the last week and a half, two weeks, actually, and uh, I've had more lunches and dinners and my body knows what to do with. So I don't think I could find anything that fits me in the closet. <laughs> so, but I, I agree with you about um, uh, Kelly. I, I had said to her a long time ago, why don't you just get that good looking guy husband that you've got? And finally, when it did happen, I just wrote one note. I just sent a note and I just wrote the word finally. 
on the note, like, and I mailed it to them, like, I'm glad it happened because you're right. They're a great couple. They really are. And, and good people, good people. So uh, I've been I've been celebrating this birthday. I didn't think I'd live this long. I thought somebody would kill me by now, but nobody either got close enough or is brave enough to try and kill me, or I just won't die. I don't know what what's going on. No, you're a Brooklyn girl. You're you're from New York. You're not gonna you're not going anywhere. That, that that's true. That's true. <laughs> I <laughs> and I still sound like a. You know, it's funny. My brother, my sister, and I were you know we're all raised and brought up in the same place and everything. They don't sound like they're from Brooklyn. But I don't know why God said to me, you're keeping that accent no matter where you live. I've been out here for almost 50 years and I still sound like this. And people look at me like I just um, like I just got out of the car from Brooklyn. You know, <laughs> OK. All right. But uh, anyway, um, uh, everything is good. Thank God. Um, I'm getting um, I don't shut the TV off 27 hours a day because I want. All I got to say is this. I just want people to go and vote. Please, please go and vote. Our ancestors have worked hard enough for us to be able to have that privilege. And I have talked to a few people that kind of take it like, well, you know, uh, 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 I'm not in the uh, 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 business. Mm. I just want to think that people should just get out and vote. It's a privilege that was given to us, fought for and people died for and we got to do it. What else do you want me to tell you? Who else can I annoy? Oh, oh tonight I'm going to finally find out if my nephew finally gets a, an Emmy for his show. Does he? I, I, he's been up for I don't know how many times, but we're going to see. Um, two of my, my daughters uh, are going to the um, awards tonight, and I'm just keeping my fingers crossed that God wants it, then it shall be. And I'm hoping that he does that and he works hard at the shop. He's incredible. Is, yeah, he is. Pain in the ass, but he's incredible. You've said that on several skits. And here's what I like most. And and I'm not dialing it back to to take away from the the spice and that that flair that you have, you know, that we have as East Coast people. But what I enjoyed after our conversation about like what last week it was, I binge watched a lot of the videos and you know what, once again, for what it's worth, and this is why we're here is the family dynamic of the show. They, they pulled some really clever, crazy, practical jokes on you, <laughs> but it's so amiss in this day and age because we see so often online on television, everywhere, everywhere else, people trying to divide family. You guys, I think, are the only ones that are intact by sharing such such connection. We, we, we've been very, very lucky. We really have. I mean, God bless everybody. Um, Jimmy is now uh, doing a number on, on my youngest daughter, Mickey. Now I see her. He takes her on the show and does all kinds of weird things. And then giggles. I <laughs> love the way he giggles. He can giggle better than any four women I know, honest to God, especially if it's happening to somebody in his family. And he, he does it with love. I have to say that. Um, he's a little bit on the crazy side. I have to blame that on um, the family, I guess, is, is just a little on the tilted side. But we do. We do care about each other. And nobody goes out to kill, murder, or maim anybody. It's It's just not that kind of a family. We kind of try and lift everybody up you know if you kind of down it's you got 20 people there dragging your butt out of the sand and lifting you up and saying tomorrow's a better day tomorrow's gonna be a better day and we hope that i hope that for everybody i i really wish it was contagious like the mumps or the measles mm. because it would be such a better place to 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 live in i i i i'm just sometimes very sad when I hear sad things. I don't get my kicks on things not being good, but we're very lucky where we really are. But everybody, it, it seems to come natural. My nephew Sal is another crazy one. Um, 
he and Jimmy are like uh, like they're attached at the hip. You know, they do crazy things with together and to each other and to everybody else in the family. But you have to know that there's no no maliciousness involved in it, which is kind of nice. You know, just lucky. Uh, I wish that I wish that on everybody. I really do. It would be such a a nice place to to be. Do you find, like from what I shared before, and thank you, Aunt Chippy, that there seems to be a purposeful division, people wanting to separate out of family connect connection and, and camaraderie and all of that? I mean, obviously, things have definitely have changed within 85 years. Well, I'll be honest with you. Years and years ago, when I was younger and everybody lived on the same block or within two blocks of each other, we kept an eye on each other and we cared about each other and you cared about your neighbor. Uh, there was never any division. I mean, I grew up in a Jewish Italian neighborhood, Irish neighborhood. It was never, I, you know, I'm still not familiar with the stupid words that they come up with now, but we never ever discussed anything that was hurtful. It was just not done. And um, it didn't even cross your mind to do anything like that. Um, it was it, it was a whole different, I don't know what happened. I really don't know what happened in the world uh, where everybody is like looking to kill, murder, and maim each other instead of, you know, hugging and kissing. I don't know. We just... Um, there was just never any of that division either either in my family or my block or in my neighborhood, you know. It, it's sad. It really is sad because it was better then. We're much more progressed now and everybody's got their little phones next to them um, that take up their time. And, and that's what I think they're investing in. They're investing in that little for me. I'm talking to you on my $25 a month uh, <laughs> little uh, flip top phone. And everybody yells at me, why don't you get a real good one? You know, we'll get you a good one. Jimmy has promised, I will buy you the best one there is. I don't want it. I just want this little flip top phone. It's easy for me. But um, I really wish sometimes it would go back to what it was because it was better then. And I don't know if anybody will agree with me, but I mean, when we go, when I go to visit my uh, grandchildren, my grandson, who's uh, 10, says, okay, grandma's here. Put the phones down. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I like to see their faces. I don't want to see the top of their heads because um, they got their faces in the phone. I think and believe because of really good people like you. Honestly, you've got to have that balance. There are some things you shared with me, you know, in private conversation, but I'm just going to say that I can relate to that because the, the fundamentals that I had learned from my grandfather and from my parents who adopted me is why I am who I am today. And in comparison to see how kids or even people my age and younger are, it's astonishing of yeah. of what's happening here because I'm not conforming to anything. I'm the the rule of law of how to be at least fairly comparable as a human being should still exist. I I from your mouth to God's ears, <laughs> it should should really that's the way it should be, and that's the way it was a better way because we cared about each other. We really did. I, I remember a story. Um, we we were on the block, and and Mrs. Schwartz down the block called me over. Chippy, Chippy, come here, come here. What's the matter? I need bread. Go around the corner to Frank. Get the bread. I said okay. I went and got the bread. Gave brought it to her, and she gave me a nickel. And I came home. I was so excited. My God, a nickel was a lot of money. I went home. I said to my mother, Ma, look, I got a nickel. She said, Where did you get the nickel? I said, Mrs. Schwartz gave me a nickel because I went to Frank and bought the bread. She said, and now you know what you're going to do, don't you? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to spend the nickel. She goes, no, you're bringing that nickel back to Mrs. Schwartz and telling her you don't have to pay me to mm. do that. I do it any time. And you learn things from that. Like, I don't know. It, 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 you just learn certain things that are the right thing to do, the wrong thing to do, and try not to do the wrong thing. I don't know. You reminded me of something that happened yesterday. 
uh, the FedEx guy who happened to be on his phone delivered my neighbor's package to me. Cause, uh-huh. And I saw him get out of the vehicle and I'm thinking to myself, I am not expecting a package. So what on earth is he bringing? So I go downstairs, happen to be something, for, you know, my neighbor's mom, she ordered, he, I, I called up Richard. I was like, I've got one of your packages here. I, I said, it's got this person's name on it. He's like, yeah, that's my mom. She ordered sheets. I said, well, I'm not going to leave it outside. Not that we, mm-hmm. I live in a country, not that we need to worry about porch pirates, but you never know. I mean, just to be safe. I said, do you want me to keep it in here? I said, I'm going to be going. Um, I got to head to the studio. I'm going to be doing an interview. I said, I can bring it over if you're home. He's like, no, we're out of town right now. He's like, the, the boys are there. He's like, just go put it on the front porch. I said, are you sure? I put it over there. They do have one of those ring doorbells. And I did text my said, all right, it's on the front porch. I placed it kind of hidden so and so forth. But that's yeah. the thing. How many people are giving other people their packages back? You know, it's yeah. Like- <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 um, I, I don't know what happened. I really don't. It's not like all of a sudden a thunderbolt came down and changed people's, um, way of life um it's not better i mean we have made progress in a lot of things but in the human element i don't think we've made that much progress in fact i don't think we've made it at all i think that we've um isolated ourselves with the phones and our faces i i I was went to dinner with some friends of mine they were celebrating my birthday and we went and like I said, I have this little $25 cricket phone, you know, and which I'm happy with. And I see these other people at a table and they're, nobody's talking to each other. They all got their phones out and they got their heads down. And all you could see is the top of their heads. And they're all, you know, so involved. I'm thinking to myself, why did you even bother going to dinner with these people? Why even bother if you're so involved in whatever is on the phone, which is more important? And um, we don't do that in the family, uh, in our in my family anyway. Everybody knows, you know, put that phone down. It's not mm. that important. If it's, God forbid, an emergency, we'll hear about it, you know, or the house will explode and we'll all go together. But I thought, how sad. They're missing such nice stories that they could bring with them for the time that they're not with these people and they're not Mm -hmm. sad sad we we haven't made we haven't made progress in our relationships we may have made progress in things that we could use but not really things that we really need the things we need are each other i agree i i enjoy the days when you know your parents or you yell upstairs it's dinner time and all of this <laughs> they're texting now i was at my friend's house one day for dinner her her kids were upstairs playing video games and i said you want me to yell for them she's like no i'll just go in and text them i was like text them i was uh, like what is this the new intercom way of like talking uh, to your kids i said just i i said just freaking yell up the stairs at them. Up that, that's it holler up the stairs <laughs> <laughs> because we how lived, go ahead we, we lived we lived in a two-story two-family house and my grandfather my mother's sister two sisters and a brother lived upstairs and we were downstairs and when they wanted us when my grandfather wanted us all he did was bang on the ceiling well his floor our ceiling yeah and my mother would say go upstairs grandpa needs you or your grand aunt needs you whoever <laughs> and it was it was it was People would think that that was crazy now, but it isn't crazy. No, it's, it's, it's such a, a connection. And I still think of it now at 85 years old and who knows, I'll probably drop dead in an hour or something. It doesn't matter. I think it's not how long you live. It's how well you've lived. Ooh, I like and that. I think that that's, um, Length is, is, is God's will. I didn't have anything to do with it. You know, uh, I smoked. I never drank, but I smoked. And, you know, he still kept me here. But uh, I think to myself, I wish there was something I could do, say, or 
something that would change things uh, back to the way they were. Keep your cell phones, you know, you know, connect with your friend across the country, up the block, whatever. But kind of let's get this human factor back mm -hmm. to each other. But, you know, you can, you can hope, you can pray, and you just hope for the best and keep your fingers crossed. Doesn't it give you fulfillment, like when you're doing these skits with Jimmy and when you're uh, having dinner parties or dinner socials or whatever it is that you're going through, and then you've had all of the this food for your birthday, and I've got to ask, did you have your crab legs? I did. Did you have your crab legs? <laughs> <laughs> Sal, Sal sends me, it's funny, Sal always sends me crab legs, okay? And Jimmy too, but now... Jimmy's like, he's afraid I'm going to get some kind of uh, uh, iodine poisoning or something. We went out for dinner. I had met him and the family. And um, we had a wonder. I get there. I went to California. I get there. My daughter says, well, I haven't dinner with uh, Molly and Jimmy and the kids. And I'm like, okay. So my nephew, my great nephew, uh, Billy, comes in, Jimmy's son, all dressed up in a suit with a white shirt and a tie. I said to him, Billy, you look so handsome. Mm -hmm. He said, and chippy, I was invited to a birthday party. And I thought, oh, this little bit of a thing got all dressed up for me. But Jimmy did his usual thing, gave me a wonderful gift, what a terrific dinner, and gave me a pack of cigarettes. And so we had dinner, and everybody kissed each other. We went home, and I said to my daughter, Mickey, I'm going to sit outside. I'm going to, it's only nine o'clock. I'm going to have a cigarette. And I opened up the pack. It had the cellophane on it and everything. And I took the cigarette out. And I thought Jimmy got over this by the time he was 15, but he didn't. I lit the cigarette and it exploded. Ooh. And Mickey, who's, you know, they're as tight with each other, these cousins, uh, was sitting there videotaping it because she knew that they were going to explode. And this is the kid that I gave birth to who was still on her cousin's side. <laughs> so he, they, she, oh. uh, the, the cigarette exploded. I'm screaming, yelling. I knew that little so-and-so was going to do this. And she sent it to Jimmy and Jimmy said, I made his whole time wonderful because it, the, I, I put, I use a cigarette. But that's what they're still doing to me. I wonder who they're going to pick on when I croak. They'll probably Jimmy will probably take me out of the coffin and do something. Well, they're going to have a lot of really good reruns because I <laughs> didn't really find one. And honestly, the trophy one is the best. I really did enjoy that episode. Did you? Yeah, yeah. I really did. Well, I can't imagine a man coming and telling me I was good for a porn f film. I could be a porn star. Could you imagine that? They pull, they blurred it, but did he put a dildo on top of the trophy? Is that what that was? Yes. <laughs> Disgusting little bastard. I wanted him. I was calling 911. Don't ask. I wanted He said, oh, I could make you a great porn star, you know. Yeah. I'm like, get out of here. Get out. Get out. Now, I want you to know, I volunteer over there. Yeah. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't get paid. This is not a salary job. And my friend owns the place. She had a stroke and, and I just went and she needed help. And I've been going there for like a year now, you know, and I was just dialing 911 to get him the hell out of there when uh, Sal and my daughter and the rest of the crew, Patrick and, and all the guys came out. And then I knew it was a joke, but I had no, and I'm, everybody says to me, Oh, you, you've got to know by now. No, you don't know because my head isn't that way. You know, like, mm -hmm. Oh, they're going to do something to me. It never leaves you concerned. Like maybe they're going to catch you on a toilet. <laughs> God knows. I came, <laughs> I come home sometimes and I look in the, in the bathroom to do see you? if there's, if there's what you're calling the shower, who knows? <laughs> Listen, they painted my house orange and puke green. I don't know if you've ever seen that no. one, but if you go on Jimmy's thing and see Aunt Chippy, they painted my whole house orange and green. 
and 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 they they they've done well. You saw them. They put a, the car in. My, Jimmy's so good. I had said to him, "I'm so proud of you, Jimmy, that you bought your old teacher a a, a car." People forty years later, they don't even remember the teacher's name, but you remembered that he was a nice guy. You had the money to be able to do it, and you bought him a car. And he said, yeah, 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 he was a nice guy, so I wanted to do something nice for him. And then he went and put a car in my living room. Oh, my God. And, yes, had to take out my dining room set, had to take the, 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 the glass doors off the walls and back the car into my living room. And my nephew, uh, Sal, was going back and forth in my living room. I thought he was going to crash the whole place down. But that was the car he bought, bought for me. Wow. I said, so you get the guy that you bought it for, your old teacher, did you put it on the street or did you put it in his house? He said, him I put on the street, you I put in the house. <laughs> I know. I know. But anyway, he's a good boy. He really is. He's He's got a good heart. And um, I guess my life would have been a lot boring a lot more boring without him in my life are you happy and, and surprised of just how well you two just coincide so perfectly together i have the the video of where your garage is orange your home is painted that hideous green yes. I, i'm surprised i missed this one I, i'm just do you do you feel blessed? I mean, how how do you really, really feel? What is that word or, or what comes to your okay. mind? Okay, I think I don't know if blessed would be the great word for it. <laughs> uh, I think you're being a little magnanimous in your vocabulary. Uh, it's always, um, I, I, I'm all, always in shock. And people say, oh my God, you should know by now. Well, you don't because... I mean, I baptized this kid, and so I didn't expect him to be crazy. Mm -hmm. um, and so when he does crazy things, I think to myself, I didn't even think of stuff like that. You know, where did it come from? But my father was a little bit on the crazy side. They, My, my father's family were jokesters and did jokes to each other, and they loved each other, like, to the teeth. You know, they were... Um, six boys and six girls and they called each other by the first if they re referred to each other they would say brother joe brother sal brother this sister sophie sister lucy that's how they were and that's what we were brought up in really where that relationship that connection mm -hmm. was never forgotten you know it's like this is your family you do right by them and things will be okay. And Jimmy just is a little on the tilted side. That's all he's tilted. <laughs> I said to him, why don't you do this to your mother? He said, she never falls for anything. My sister is, his mother is, is, is incredible. She's, she's, she went, she's on a cruise now to see the Northern Lights. I hope to God she sees them. We speak every single morning. Yeah. And I haven't spoken to her in seven days, and I miss it terrible. But um, his, his mother doesn't, she just looks at him, sh shrugs her shoulders, and walks away. Mm -hmm. And me, I get the, I, I can't keep my mouth shut. That's probably why it keeps picking on me. It's perfect. It, it literally, it's perfection. And you guys have been doing this for how many decades? Or he's been doing this to you for how many decades? I mean, it's well, been a long he's time. He's been doing it to me since he's what, 56 years old, 56, 57 years old. He's been doing this to me since he's about 11. Wow. Since he's about 11, he was able to get these blow ups uh, that you put in cigarettes and he would get in my purse or somehow and put them in there and I light up a cigarette. It happened in a casino. I was in a casino waiting for my mother to finish playing bingo and I lit up a cigarette and the cigarette exploded. And a woman on my right dove to the floor and the guy on my left got hysterical laugh and I said, ah, damn kid, he did it again. He ruined a whole pack of cigarettes. 
and and I threw the cigarettes on the, in, uh, away, and the guy says to me, like, are you going to throw them away? And I'm like, yeah. He said, can I have them? I said, go ahead, take them. So he took them, and I don't know how many people he got with it, but I'm sure Jimmy put his exploded an explosion in every one of those cigarettes. Oh but he did God. it since he was a kid. Yeah. Are you I thought he got over it until uh, my birthday, and he had to celebrate it with another explosive cigarette. <laughs> Does he really not want you to smoke? Because I know on a one episode with the doctor prank, you said you only do two cigarettes a day. Do you still yeah. only do two cigarettes a day? Yeah. Yeah. I have one after lunch and one after dinner. I never smoked in the morning. I, I don't even like the smell of smoke in the morning. I'm the only one in the family that does smoke. Um, my husband had given it up when he was 40. He just stopped smoking. He said, ah, I had enough of this. And if he smoked in the morning, I'd have to walk out of the kitchen. I'd, I'd go in the bedroom or the living room or someplace. I didn't like the smell of smoke in the morning. I don't know why. No, nobody, my, my, my mother never smoked. My sister never smoked. My brother once in a while would smoke a cigar or something. I don't know why I do. Mm. But I smoke two a day. That's it. You never have smoker's breath, do you? Never. Well, I mean, how close are you going to get to me? You know, not many people <laughs> want to get that close. Do you take a mint afterwards? Or I'm an ex-smoker. Oh, yeah. I, I had smoked for a while. So. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I like I said, I if I'm having, after I have lunch, I'd like, I like to have a cigarette a little while later. Not right away, but a little while later. And, you know, I always got something that I put in my mouth and, I don't know, maybe that's why nobody's been kissing me lately. Mm, uh, could be. Could be. Yeah. I don't move out of the house anymore. It's so damn hot here. Yeah, the summers are getting longer. That heat, that's another thing. I'm going to tell you, Aunt Chippy, why I'm glad I'm not in Vegas, especially now, is I have... All right, so we did have a hot... You know how our heat spells can happen. It happened yes. in July for about a couple of days here. My windows have been open over 90% of the time. I don't have yeah. the air conditioning running. My neighbor doesn't even have the air conditioning running. It's gorgeous. It's 82 today. I'm not sweating at all. And I got all the windows open and ceiling fans. Well, I have to tell you, September and October are great months in, in New York. They always were. Um, uh, in fact, I'm, I was kind of a, uh, upset. We usually go to New York at the, um, the beginning of October for the show. We, at the uh, Brooklyn the Academy of Music, Brooklyn Academy of Music, and we're not going this year because I love being in New York, September, October, mm -hmm. even part of November. I just don't like the cold weather. I hate the cold weather. I used to hate it when I was a kid. My mother would say to me, go outside. Come on, get some, get your cheeks a little rosy. And I'd be like, I'm happy with no rosy cheeks. <laughs> and she'd send me outside with my brother and my sister. And I would be the one standing at the door crying. I want to come in. It's too cold. It's too cold. But um, I, 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 I don't like the extreme cold weather. Mm -hmm. But then the Brooklyn Academy of Music was charging too, too, too much money. And Jimmy said, no, nah, that's ridiculous. It was, they were way out of line. They wanted a million dollars for one week. What? Yeah. To rent the Brooklyn Academy of Music for one week. That's all we're there for. They wanted a million dollars. And Jimmy said, that's, wow. that's ridiculous. Yeah. Wow. So they canceled our, our trip to New York uh, because of that. That's insane. Is it, was that I mean, during a pandemic? No, just like now we would be getting ready to go to New York, you know, in the first week in October or the last week in September. Oh. And everybody would be all excited about it, that we were going to do it. But, I mean, what do they have to do? They don't even do anything. They they have to open their doors. That's it. Jimmy, they, they bring all this stuff with them uh, uh, from from California. Yeah. And uh, they don't have to do anything. Maybe they have to clean up after a sweep up, but how much is that going to cost That's you? That's insane. But anyway, they yeah, they they... they they work their way out of it, you know, so we're not going. But so I got married in October. I love the weather in mm -hmm. October, um, but um, it, it didn't work out this year for crazy reasons. 
but everybody does crazy stuff. What are you going to do? Maybe they'll miss us so much. They'll, they'll, <laughs> they'll get down to a reasonable price and, um, and, uh, uh, have it available for us next year with the help of God. Yeah, seriously. Hey, there's all, there's always room to negotiate on anything. Nothing is you truly set in stone. Yeah. You never, you just never know. Sometimes people say things and think that it's okay in their head. And then when it comes out verbally, it's like, that was ridiculous. You know, you think to yourself something and then you say it, and you know, I should have shut my mouth on that one, you know, kind of thing. But we'll see what happens. But if you don't say it, somebody else won't say it either, not to interrupt. But if you don't say it, that's true. That's true. But, you know, when when they said we're not going to go, that was enough of a reason you know, that was enough of a, a wake up call for them that they just missed out on on the first of all, the advertisement that we were there and uh, the money that they could have made. So now it'll just sit there. If they get somebody else to rent it, great for them. If not, then it'll sit empty. So that's too bad. Yeah, I was asking because there are places here on the East Coast. And that's why I asked even, you know, when we think about New York that are still vacant since the pandemic. I was like, how can a a, a landlord or a property owner allow not only a residential to sit for that many years, but a commercial and it's dilapidated. Yeah. Yeah. And Jimmy always rents a a house there. You know, when they're there, they always, he rents a house to stay in. We stay in the hotels because everybody likes to get together and everything, you know, Jimmy's always working, you know, he's always working on the next, next, what, who, who's coming up next. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, we do the best we can with, with whatever Jimmy's smart and Jimmy's not stupid and he's not malicious and he's not vindictive. He's just funny. That's all there is to him. He's funny and he'll do anything for joke. And if it's, putting blowups in my cigarettes. Oh, well, <laughs> and that it, makes him happy. At least, okay. At least it's, he's not putting blowups or something in a toilet or in a toilet paper. <laughs> well, Hey, listen, don't say it because who oh, knows? Okay. He may hear you. And he'll say, Hey, you know, that's a good idea. I haven't done that oh, yet. My. You know, you know, but people, if, we did that back in the, Oh, I'm not going to say I did it, but I know. And I had friends that put like, you know, eight bombs and stuff in toilets. So, hey. Oh, did they really? Yeah, they yeah. did. <laughs> well, oh you gosh. remember, I mean, back in the day when you pissed somebody off or during uh, Halloween or the fall time, the season time, they used to burn dog shit, put dog shit in a paper bag and burn it on the porch. Uh, you had to have known we, of that. Yeah. No, we didn't. <laughs> I'm glad I wasn't in your name. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah. No, they what they used to do on Halloween, which to me was just as bad. They would take him. You would take your mother's uh, stocking. Yeah. And you would grind up different chalk, so you had different colors, and then you made a knot at the end of it, and then you'd beat the shit out of your friends, <laughs> and they'd have a million different colors all over their clothes. And I would stand outside crying. I want to come in, Ma. Ma, I want to come in. And my brother would go, come here, let me get some more chalk on you, you know. And so when she saw I had enough chalk on me, she would let me in the house because I hated that stuff. Mm. But my brother loved it, but I didn't care for it. But everybody did it. But anyway, what have you got planned for the wonderful people that listen to you? Well, I want to thank you for being with us today on Live on Air with Stephen Cuoco. And uh, I hope this isn't all you're giving them because you've shortchanged them if I'm the best of what you got here today. I think that you are the best amongst the best. And what I saw in you is, and I still stick to it, is you are, you're just somebody that I see that beauty and that greatness in you. And I didn't want anything else but to do what we're doing now, just to sit and have a conversation. Uh-huh. Can I adopt you again? Can you be adopted twice? Actually, you can. And do you know adults <laughs> can be adopted? I had no idea that that is real. But yes, you can adopt an adult. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <Yes>. All right. <laughs> but you got to be ready. 
If you're in this family, anything's liable to happen to you. Nothing bad. Just as soon as it's funny. That's that's the whole um, 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 the, the, the the crisis in the family. It's got to be funny. And if it's funny, then everybody goes, oh, "Okay, that was funny." Usually, it happens to be, but um, it, it, it it's, it's anybody's. It's it, it's up to anybody to do whatever they want to do with it. But I, why did you ask me about the crab legs? Because I'm a huge fan of king crab legs. I could eat them every day. That brought joy I, to my face when I saw Sal bring that out to you. I'm I'm telling you, he's he's such a character. He really is. God bless him. He's such a good boy. He really he's such a good boy. They're all good. They really are all good kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know how we got so lucky. I really don't. I don't know if somebody was up there praying for us or what. But you know, they're all kind of close in age. Like Sal and my daughter Mickey and my sister's daughter Jill are all born within months of each other. So they're kind of like. It's like they not only got a cousin, but they got a friend. Mm. So it was, you know, lucky for them. I mean, it was it was great, but that that's how they are in the age group, you know. But um, it's it's they're incredible. They really are. I'm glad that when I go, that we left somebody good behind. Yeah, and that's the biggest thing that I appreciate with you. And you and I have had several conversations, including the one when we met in person. And that's what I cherish most is I felt safe with you. I felt safe and comfortable around you. And then when we got that selfie, you were, if, do you remember, you were like, you want to take a photo with me? No one wants to take a photo with me. And I, <laughs> I, I enjoyed that. And, you know, I, I just want to, you know, it's, they always look around for somebody better looking. And I don't blame them. <laughs> I don't blame them. I um, probably would have done the same thing. Like you got to pick. You got to be kidding me. You picked that one. Uh oh. But it was a pleasure. It really was. And and you're a delight. And you're a credit. You're a credit not only to yourself, mm. but you're a credit to everybody around you. And I want you to know that that you're important, and you're you're cherished. And I think that that's more important than being rich and famous, being cherished. And that's, that's something that you can't buy. You can't send away for it and you can't, you know, nobody will just give it to you. You have to earn it. And I think you did. Thank you. I'm, I'm feeling emotional from that because that was one of the things that I honestly prayed about. I said, if there is, if there is a message that I am meant to know and receive from Aunt Chippy today, I said, God, please make it happen. Because I'm not, I'm not going to lie, and I want to tell you why I said, you know nothing about how I was feeling today. We did not bring it up. We did not talk and have a conversation before going live. No. I, was, I was just there, just like I said, relaxing and just getting myself in that space of groundedness for this interview to be present and available for you. And I just was, just was feeling in myself that exactly what you were saying. I wasn't expecting something like that. It's just that I'm so on the go all the time and my parents aren't around anymore. Like biologically, like I'm an orphan. My parents who adopted me, my dad is still alive, but, uh, you know, he's having a lot of medical problems and we believe he's got, you know, the beginnings of onset dementia. I mean, you know, I brought this up to my brother, their biological son, and it just feels just a bit lonely at times because I just... I'm not going to say that I collapsed myself in you. I would say that what I greatly appreciate is I don't, I don't feel alone and I didn't feel alone when I met you. And that was not a feeling that I had remembered for a very long time until I met you. Well, you're giving me more credit than I think I deserve. I just know good people. 
and when they're good, I'm not I'm not um, very um, generous in my um, my feelings about people as far as being nice to them. It's like easier for me to make a joke or you know kind of like blow it off. But um, I want you to know you're valued, you're important, and what you're doing. As long as you lead a good life, that's all you have to do. Be generous to other people. You've been kinder to me than than uh, some people. Uh, your um, your outlook is good, and so just keep up the good work. That's what God put you here for. He didn't put you here because you had nothing better to do. <laughs> yeah. He really put you here because there was a reason why you were put here. And give him that credit that he did the right thing. Thank you. Honestly, thank you. And that's why coming from you, and this is why I truly hope that you that you feel and see clearly of why we connected in the way that we do and why I see you is be, the way that I do is because that this message is supposed to come from you. It could come from anyone else, and I do get, you know, certain praises and and support but it's you being perfectly who you are aunt chippy that it makes and feels true and that's what's most important to me i i don't need you to be perfect i wouldn't want you to be like my mother thank who, god you thank know. god you don't expect me to be no, perfect no i would fall short <laughs> terribly i i i appreciate you i really do I I'm flattered that you even asked me to be on the show. I was like, Oh my God. Oh my God. Am I, I going to be, oh my God, am I going to be like a jerk? What's the matter? What's the matter? What's going on with this? What does he want from me? And what I almost didn't think you were going to do it. Cause I, cause you were very surprised. I was like, well, that actually surprised me because I would think that it would have been normal that someone would want to sit down no, and talk to you. No, 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 no. I don't, I don't consider myself in that category at wow. all. I just think that, you know, Jimmy, Jimmy does his thing with me and it's family and why should, you know, anybody outside of the family, you know, even care that much, you know, it's like, that eh, just like, it's okay. And if everybody gets a laugh out of it. That's okay by me too. I don't care. But, um, you're, you're, you're important. What you're doing is important and just keep up the good work. That's all you have to do. I will. And tell everybody to vote. Yes. Okay. <laughs> all right. I love you. Have a wonderful, have a wonderful week. Thank you, Aunt Chippy. Take care. You Bye -bye. too. Thank you to everyone who's tuned in to live on air with Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Download the iOS or Android app. Tune in on Alexa. Power 98.5 is available on Apple Music. And you can listen to this on BizTalk Radio on biztalkradio.com. It's also going to be available on iHeartRadio, Spotify, and Apple Music. Uh, Apple Music is where Power 98.5 is on. Spotify, Amazon, and iHeart. So once again, if you're unable to tune into the live episode, you will be able to listen to it and to hear it on any one of your favorite podcast platforms. Live well, be well, and do well. And always remember, put your own emotional, mental, and physical health and well-being first in order to sustain and live fruitfully to be an asset and a resource for someone else. Have a great day, everyone. Friend us on your socials and let's connect.